Hello everyone and welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide. My name is Adam Hancock and today I am breaking down should you buy a house in 2023 in Sarasota, Florida. We're talking new construction, resale, hedging, risk mitigation, quality of life, and everything in between. I hope this adds you a ton of value in the top end. Okay, one of the first questions I'd probably ask myself in this scenario is, am I targeting a new construction home in 2023 or a resale home? Because economics and logistics are going to vary quite a bit when it comes to this different situation, basically. So if we Talk about new construction just for a minute. You know, what you have to look at is realistically, it's taking about 14 to 18 months to build these homes right now. So if you just say logistics first and you go to sign today, you're talking that's maybe guaranteeing yourself a 2024. But as any time passes, like this might be a 2025 or 2026 conversation. So just purely on that timeline alone, how much does that matter? And then if we go more on the economic side, which is where my heart kind of leans most of the time, is the simple fact is you were, you were making a decision relatively early and trying to see, do I know an, enough information to be okay with that decision? If in nine months from now, something happens that altered the way I felt about this deal, and I still have nine months to go on the contract without any recourse or very little recourse, you know, because that's typically the way these contracts are written. Now it's give and take with that, right? So two years ago, when builders let someone sign a home and these folks that, you know, in certain situations got these huge equity positions from this crazy one-time market, um, when they signed a contract, there was, th there was a lot of times where the builder would have loved to go back and be like, hey, never mind. You know, this house should be way more expensive than that, but there's no price escalation clauses for the most part in the contract. So the builder can't necessarily raise it in most contracts, right? This isn't a across the board, but if something changes on their end, but also the same reason that typically if they lower your neighbor's house next to your house while you're six months into a build, you can't go back and be like, I want that same price. I've seen shades of gray with all this kind of stuff, but all that to say, you basically have to make a decision so early that you almost need to uh, get yourself around a no regrets model of what information do I need to know. And the other thing I might do is I might actually dive into the worst case scenario. You built a house, it's uh, you're four months into a contract and they're still building around, right? you got a while to go. But then the house is the house three doors down, you know, the builder comes and they list that home for 80K and you look at it and you're like, that's my same damn house, you know? And you go to them and you say, what can, what can we do with this situation? You know, like this is my home and what, you know, and they're like, you know, it is what it is. We didn't know at the time they're working off a of margin. Obviously they would try to get more money if they could, they don't feel like they could. And maybe they'll throw you a bone and give you 15 K or give you incentives to something. But, but you can't really do anything because contractually it's very, it's very stern. So then I would maybe look at your personal situation, like aside from anything that's happening, the noise around, because most likely those one or two one-off comps aren't going to kill your equity position. It's look at like your particular situation and what are the actual negatives? Because you've got to look at when are you going to sell? Are you actually in the red when you close this just because that one home? What about the other million of comps around the area? Are you actually in the red? Also, when are you going to sell the home? Do you actually think it's not going to be worth what you need by the time you sell? I get you could have made more money, but if we knew all that information in advance, we'd all have a trillion dollars, right? So I get like, no one wants to get screwed, but this is a volatile market anyway. So you got to kind of balance that. You could get down to the economics of it pretty minute. You could find out the actual financials of interest rate changes and equity position changes and all that kind of stuff. The other big thing to look at, because this is a big balance of juxtaposition, is the cost of waiting to sign. Say like, you don't want to be in this situation I'm describing and you wait and you're like, I'm hearing all this stuff about price drops. So by waiting, what is the gain and what's the risk to you? Now, I think thankfully right now, I don't know how much risk you would have in actual price differences by waiting, but I don't know how much gain you have either. So if you wait, what if you don't get this windfall of $150,000 decreased price of a home? What if it's 10 to 15 to 20? Then what was it worth it by losing the time to wait to start your build? I don't know. I mean, I'm just asking these questions, devil's advocate. Also, the big thing here is this is a big pot of money. What you gained on this side, did you lose in your home state by paying what you're paying to live in your current home state or whatever your financial situation is there? Did that net out in a way that benefited you enough to go through another winter or whatever this may be? So I'd really look at the whole end of the spectrum. 
This is with renting homes in between, interims, sell, liquidating a home, buying a new one, building versus resale, all this stuff comes into play. I'd really look at that hard. And just to bring that all full circle, if none of what I just said sounded remotely attractive, or you're just not romantic about new construction, or you need a quicker timeline, resale homes would inherently give you much more control in general. You know, just being able to wait, 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 wait nine months, and then buy a home and be in there on month 10, it would be quicker than any build anyway. Um, and also just like when you pick a price and you negotiate, you know, you at least know that at that time, within a 30 day gap, I knew all the information that I could have known, but uh, resale would be an alternative if the volatility of um, a too long of a gap of floating liquidity is really an issue, then you could just wait and get real picky about resale homes. Okay, a second major question I'd ask myself on this topic is where am I actually moving? Which metro? Because if you ask me, should I buy a home in 2023? And uh, you know, a lot of my problem with people making like a blanket statement about definitely no or definitely yes, is no, I wanna buy a home everywhere, but everywhere is not equal. Every city is not equal. There's inherently more safety to certain cities because of you know, myriad of different economics reasons. You know, this is all about um, hedging and risk mitigating to me. You know, some of the issues with a really price competitive market or a seller's market is that simply, you know, maybe some of the safest cities to move to for like long-term volatility are also the ones everybody else wants to move to. So the th same things that create a struggle to try to buy a home are the same things that might create the safety in your equity position over the long term, right? So if, if you were in the cheapest city in Florida, then there might be reasons for that being a factor. You know, it could be geography or industrial commercial viability. If they shot up in price at one point, what would be the chance that it sustains that pace or that enough people flood into the market to kind of keep it that level of competitiveness? You know, so you can work through additional exercises like is the market I'm targeting, do I think it's really on an upswing? Do I think it's on a downswing? Do I think this is still going to be a popular city, but it, it went up so fast that it has room to kind of come down just a bit? Is there an opportunity there? Something you could look at. You could also look at maybe you're more on a macro conversation of like you're not as deep as targeting one city yet. So then you could look at what cities or what metros in the state of Florida have uh, a better chance of doing well, you know, and go by size or quality of life or whatever. So say you're looking at big cities, you came from LA or New York or Seattle or something. And, you know, so you can't go small. So you can look at is Tampa better than Miami and Jacksonville because, uh, or Orlando, because it's coastal, but it's on the Gulf Coast. It's more central to the others and it's not on a fringe, but it's still, it has a uh, beach parts like Pinellas County and it has the full on metro parts. It's not so big that it's overwhelming. It, you know, maybe it's at a price position where it's like five to 10 years behind Miami as far as the escalation of its popularity. So if you had to pick one, is it better? You know, is Sarasota better than Boca Raton for the similar reasons where it's much more of a play first work second town. It's not as industrial as Tampa. But if you picked a, amongst other ones, like even like a Naples or the Panhandle versus a Sarasota is the central nature of it, of being like, if you had to go to one place, is it more viable? And then also, you know, at a simple factor, either you're down further in your search, or maybe you're like, I'm not, I'm not going to pick any city that just on just numbers wise works for me. Maybe you want to live in a certain place. So then you look, you could go within that place and look at micro opportunities you in know, Tampa Bay, right? Is Wesley Chapel an emerging suburb, but you're, you're still within the Tampa Bay region, Wesley Chapel versus Wamama or Brandon. You know, if you're in Sarasota, like, do you go after like a Welland Park being less or a parish being less mature than a Lakewood Ranch? That still doesn't change the metro but it changes how you can navigate within it. So that's just a couple of things I'd work through on topic number two. Okay, and the third question I want to introduce real briefly in this arena is how much does the quality of life matter versus the pure economics of the conversation to you? You know, I'm definitely more of a numbers guy by trade a lot. So I'm always down that angle, but the people we talk to day in and day out, I'm constantly reminded how big of a deal this is. I bet you could literally place a cost or a risk percentage on the the landed cost of you not being where you want to be for an extended period of time and how much that matters. You know, I was reminded by a colleague of mine yesterday, there's a colleague of mine now, but he did relocate from Canada with me in this kind of nature through YouTube. And uh, he was reminding me about the conversation of intentionality. This is something that I used to talk about all the time about, I used to tell him, because I'm from here, that I could just really severely notice that everyone moving to one place that was their dream it's so clear to me where the people that move might not realize it, but me as an outsider, it's so clear to me 
how pumped they are to be here, how much they seek community, how excited they are every day that they're like, I can't believe I'm still doing this. People that are a year removed are like, you know, looking at the winter back home and being like, I can't believe this is my life now. Like the ripple and six degree effect that has on everyone else around them. And then in certain metros in, in Florida, like it's a melting pot so much that the majority of the people are in that scenario. And it really is bleeding to the community. You know, it's such an optimistic view, you know, and you could run down lanes of, so I think that matters a lot. And you can also run down lanes of like in your home state, you know, is there a political volatile environment that you disagree with? How much is that weighing on you? What's the cost of one or two more harsh winters to you? You know, I'm not that old and my old bones feel, my hamstring starts to hurt when it's like 60 degrees outside. So what's the cost to you on dealing with another freaking winter? And then you got uh, daily commutes and traffic and maybe you live in a big metro and just a, is it healthy to be around that many people all the time? You know, what is the quality of life nature of it? And if you're waiting for a windfall, whether it's a psychological win, which a lot of times it comes down to, again, I'm not trying to be non-sympathetic, but a lot of times the bad stuff that happens with the price changes, the financial ramifications aren't near as bad as the feeling like you got taken for a ride aspect of it. So I would just look at the, actually, if you were here and you and the dust settled and you're three months removed from anything happening, what mattered more, the quality of life or the, you know, the financial win or loss there when it comes to that? So I would at least, I would at least weigh that in the conversation, uh, probably more than I would have considered in the past. All right, my friends, that is a wrap for today's video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Just a couple quick housekeeping items for you. One, when it comes to real estate needs or a conversation or anything like that, please give us a shout. I think in this kind of market, in this volatile kind of market, I think information and a team that has the ability to possibly be as unbiased as physically possible in this arena is, is, is as important as it ever has been. And I think we're kind of built in a unique way to at least be a little bit more aligned to that facet. So we would love to assist. All the contact information's here. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so. Uh, we're going to have a ton, a ton of really valuable stuff that I'm pushing in in 2023 here. So I'd love for you to at least get the alerts that it's coming. And then lastly, the sunshinestateco.com is my website. I'm redoing it now, so it's going to be uh, pretty sweet here, hopefully in May. But this is my ecosystem, uh, my repository. This, this will be at, in the middle of this year. This will be in my one of the smartest ways to search for a home, in my opinion. Um, it's like a Zillow of color commentary of sorts is the goal. So please check that out. We have free resources, tools, downloads, and we're gonna have much, much more coming. So please bookmark that if you are in a middle of a search. And more importantly, I really appreciate the support as always. Thank you so much for checking this one out. We'll see you on the next one.